looks like the movies. <laughs> One of the learnings or the insights I got was how do we translate adaptive leadership in order to create change. Adaptive leadership is of course working in a space where you're dealing with adaptive challenges. So it requires you to be comfortable where the problem itself is not necessarily clear. And it's that point you realise that leadership is not just about having all the answers but being able to navigate a room and connect people in order to solve problems. For me, the most important lesson was the deep listening. You know, truly just stopping all your mind going and listening to someone and listening to what they were telling you. In terms of making social impact, that's really, I think, really critical. The sabbatical for me was incredibly important in consolidating the learnings. And what I found was when I was with people, I was a lot more present. I listened more deeply and I was in service of what they needed rather than what I thought I had to tell them. It helped me be a lot more intentional and purposeful about my leadership. I think what I learned was I was probably my greatest barrier, like being hesitant to do something or not being bold enough. You can't be cautious all the time because making social impact of that nature requires you to be a little bolder. When asked about my role as the CEO, before I started the SILA program, I'm not sure I really knew what that was, which is a great recipe for having you down in the weeds worrying about things you probably shouldn't be worried about. What I learned at SILA that really has changed my perspective on leadership is the idea of a CEO being responsible for direction, protection and order. Putting a name and a structure around that really helped me bring a different approach to leadership. It has to be seen as something of an experience, not a program. And I've been able to bring back some of the learnings to the team and it's given us all a different way to think about leadership.